You wanna get wealthy, but you absolutely have no money whatsoever. In this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 steps that'll get you wealthy starting with nothing. Mindset is everything. I'll tell you, 80% is mindset. How you think about money, how you think about your value, what you think you can achieve, and 20% is the work part. So the number one thing you have to know is to how to go from being poor and impoverished here and how to set yourself for wealth. If you think you can or if you think you can't, you're absolutely right. So I'll tell you, one of my journeys, I didn't have much growing up. And growing up in the projects and not having anybody to really emulate or look up to as far as wealth was concerned, it was difficult. But guess what? You're able to change your mind over the years and I was able to do that. Think about this. If your parents are struggling with money, if they're always talking about not being able to afford things, if they're the kind of people that are always avoiding bill collectors, how are you going to think in your beginning years? And I'm, this is not an attack on anybody that's poor or if your parents didn't have, but I'm saying most of our mentality is shaped in those formidable years. So I want you to go out there it's not about affirmations and this is not about just the law of attraction, but change your mindset about money. Know that regardless of your hair color or skin color or your sex or your IQ, wealth is possible for you. One of the reasons why I make this content is not having people around when I was growing up and I wanna be able to impact people to get people to know that wealth is something that's very, very achievable. Without a ton of courses or I'm not sponsored on anything and I'm not trying to sell you anything, so there's no guru or fake guru stuff. Listen guys, the reason why I make content the way I do is to impact as many people as I can to promote financial literacy because I just didn't have any. That would help me reach more people out there that are looking for content like this. These concepts that I'm giving you are going to teach you how to fish rather than just giving you the fish so you never forget the skills that you acquire because money management is actually a skill set. So the more people that I can teach how to catch their own fish, the more abundant their life becomes and the more I carry my mission through. Let's create a vision because sight is correctable, but vision is not. And so having that basic foundation in your system when you think about wealth and wealth management and finances is to establish great roots. If you have great roots, then you get great fruits. So if you start off thinking that money is very possible, like I said, that mindset issue needs to be there and having a vision of where you wanna go with your wealth. See, not everybody needs that Lambo and that mansion. Some people are going to be okay with just having enough, so you need to see where your vision is. Think broad and think big, but only what is going to satisfy you in the long run. When we want to lose weight, what do we do? We cut calories, close your mouth, and move your feet more. It's a really simple approach. And if I was going to write a book on weight management or weight loss, it would be a very short book. It would say, eat less, move more. Correct? Those are all habits that form things that we want in life. With money, you have to start establishing wealthful habits. For example, living below your means. For example, trying to create more wealth by creating more revenue, by having things that are passive. Now, some people say there's no passive income. Tell that to YouTubers whose videos make thousands, if not millions of dollars years after they've already created it once. Tell that to people like me who have invested heavily in real estate and while I'm sleeping or traveling or making videos, my tenants are paying down my mortgages and building my wealth. So there are ways that you can do this. Just know that everything is related to a habit. Your habit of spending and earning has to be established up front. So make a note of what habits you need to change with regard regard to money right now. Remember where you are. The most powerful maps in the world won't work unless you know where you are on the map. Knowing your financial situation will open up new horizons for you and it's accurate depiction of where you are right now. If you want to get to B, you need to know where A is starting. Look at your finances. Know your, where your bank accounts are. Know how much money is in them. Know how much interest rate you're paying on your debt. Knowing where you are right now is eventually going to get you the steps you need to get to your destination. Establishing skills is very, very important. And I've talked about this before. A lot of people spend a lot of time that doesn't yield them results. For example, a lot of people are spectators. And now I'm not against athletes or sports, but I tend to watch very little of it. If you want to pick up skills in money management, it would be greater served if you spend a little bit of time studying, reading, looking at the financial market, reading publications about the financial market or investments or crypto or whatever it is. Take your time, be responsible for your time and start 
to establish the skills needed to be a better, wealthier individual. And now you don't have to pay for books. Remember, part of this video is talking about how to start with zero. The library system in America is amazing. You don't need anything but to go over and walk over to the library. The wealth of knowledge and the knowledge of wealth is sitting right there for you for absolutely free. As well as content like this all over YouTube. I'm really, really big on setting established goals and putting them into writing. I look back and oftentimes I've achieved the things that I wrote years ago and I don't even know how I got there sometimes. But taking your thoughts out and putting on paper is something very, very magical. Write everything down that you want to establish. Why you want to establish them next to each one. So if your number one thing is to buy a house, write down why it's important for you to buy a house. If you want to buy a car, it could be whatever car. Write down the car and say why it's important to you. Sometimes in writing out the why, I find out, well, I really don't need that thing because the why was wrong in the first place. So writing and establishing goals is really important. Every great company has goals. They meet, they want to make X amount of money. This is their goal. This is how they're going to get there. You need to think like a business and operate like one even before you have one. This one I really like. There are people out there making millions on Amazon FBA, but I'm not gonna run towards Amazon FBA or drop shipping or Shopify. That's not what I'm either interested in or what my expertise is in. But I could tell you this, are there people making millions doing those things? Absolutely. There are millionaires being produced by people who just mow lawns. It doesn't matter what your modality is. Mine's happens to be in real estate. Establish a clear cut modality of how or a model of how you want to achieve your goal. If that's in sports, put your time and energy in sport. If that's going to be as a creative, then put your time and energy. But establish the pathway that you're going to use to get to riches because I tell you this, there is no one way to get wealth. Now let's talk about mastery. A lot of times people just think, you know what, I'm going to watch a little bit of something like I told you to do before and that's it. I'm a master at it. Mastery takes years of skills. It takes losses. It takes failure. Sometimes you're going to end up losing a little bit of money or all of your money. There's been business ventures that I have done where I absolutely got my ass kicked, where I absolutely lost a ton of money, but I grew through it. I was talking to a friend of mine talking about one of the many businesses that I've tried and failed at. If I didn't do those things, I wouldn't have learned as much. So knowing that becoming a master at something is going to take time and energy, right? You can't just one day, no matter how much natural talent you have, become a master overnight. You have to put in the time and energy. And so if you want to really master your finances, guess what? You have to put in time and energy and not just picking up a book once, not just watching content one time but you have to be able to have a schedule where you're starting to do more and more towards your goals and putting more and more time. And eventually you have enough of a savings and investment where you start to see your rewards. But it's not gonna happen overnight. It is definitely simple, but it's not easy. There's a stage that where your money actually starts working for you. You worked hard for it, you put it in investments. It's not always a win-win situation, but when I go to my Robinhood account or when I go to my other investment accounts, I could see the money growing. I could see that my dollars are working for me. They may not work right away and you might need a significant amount before you start to see real results, but that's where that passive nature comes in. There's nothing passive about investing because you're gonna have to take an active approach, but once you have enough money in different investments, you're gonna start to see returns coming while everybody else is sitting around watching the markets go by. At some point, you might decide that you want retirement. For me, that just means working a little bit less and never quitting at what I love to do. For you, that might mean sipping Mai Tais at age 30 in some faraway land with a laptop, watching beautiful things go by. It's up to you. It really is up to you. And so looking at your future, where do you want to be at what age? It's really, really important and critical that you understand you have to be future-minded with your investments. And lastly, let's talk about legacy. Now, if you have children, awesome. They they might be your legacy, the people that receive your wealth, and there are ways to ensure that they receive your wealth in the right way, which I'll talk about later in some other videos. And if you want me to talk about that in later videos, go ahead and comment down below. Legacy building doesn't have to be just your children. It could be your relatives. It could be a worthy cause. What are you going to do with all this wealth that you've acquired? That's the end game. And you need to think about that now, even if you have no money. Because remember, it goes all back to mindset. You know you're going to get wealthy applying these principles, and you know you'll establish wealth over time. And now you should also think, what am I going to do with X amount of money? Tell me exactly how much you want. Write down in the comments exactly how much you think you want to have that life you've always dreamed and what you think your legacy is going to be worth in financial dollars. Now that you know the 10 steps of building wealth, I want you to watch the next video that's about how to increase your income because that's also a huge part of this equation. Go ahead and click here.